Well, it's been, what, four months now since my last upload? And, well, this is really what I've been doing for the last four months, is this electric skateboard. I have some clips running in the background of it in various stages of completion, and the whole goal of making the skateboard was so that I could use it in college. Anyway, our story starts with my friend getting a job at a local machine shop. The shop has a couple 5-axis CNC machines, so as soon as that happened, we were like, oh my god, we can save so much money. By using scrap metal that the shop had discarded, we were able to create gears and a motor mount for the belt and drive we were going to use, for no cost at all. I used my now slightly practiced CAD skills to model a spur gear, a pinion gear, and the motor mount in Fusion 360. We then made toolpaths and ran the parts through the machine. To make this e-skateboard, I needed different hardware and electronics. The hardware included a skateboard, of course, a motor mount, a pinion gear, a spur gear, a wheel with the spur gear on it, a box for the electronics, and a belt for the drive. The electronics for this project are really simple. I used a 6355 brushless motor with 190 kV. 6355 means the diameter and height of the motor, and 190 kV represents the RPM for volt. The lower this number, the more torque you're going to get. I used a vest graded for up to 120 amps and a whopping 60 volts. I used four 4-cell four 3300 milliamp hour LiPo batteries that I wired in parallel and series to create a 8-cell 6600 milliamp hour battery. For control, I used what I had lying around, which was a Traxxas TQ receiver and transmitter. But what does something like this cost? I've heard e-skateboards are super, super expensive. Look at the boosted board. It costs around $1,500 for the best model. Let's take a look at all the parts I used and add up the total cost. Skateboard, $40. Drive kit, $90. 80mm wheel set, $60. Tupperware box, $10. Motor, $90. Speed controller, $100. Batteries, $140. Receiver and transmitter, $50. Leaving us with a price of $580, which is if you built this board from scratch and didn't have the parts that I already had. I not only had parts lying around, but I had access to the CNC shop, which allowed me to bring the price down a total of $200, and my end cost was around $360. Of course, all of this can be much higher or lower depending on what kind of board you use, what parts you have, and how you want to do it. But enough talk about specs and price, it's now time to evaluate the ride characteristics and performance of the final build. This is our first time riding the board, and the belt snapped right off due to alignment <laughs> issues. As we fixed more mechanical ailments, the board got better and better to ride. It's like really hard. <laughs> As you probably noticed in the last few clips, we had a big white cardboard box on the top of the board, and eventually we moved that to the bottom of the board once we got our metal box. Finally, we were able to consistently ride the board. We measured a top speed of 20 miles per hour, and with all four batteries, my range was around 15 miles, right on par with the boosted board. Of course, the board still has a bunch of quirks we need to work out, and is a couple miles an hour slower than the boosted board, but for $1,000 less, I'll definitely take it. Eventually, both my friend and I had built boards, and let me tell you, cruising around a parking lot at 20 miles an hour, especially with another person that's doing the same, is one of the most surreal experiences I've ever had. It's amazing how effortless and fun it is to carve, and it really feels like you're flying. This is definitely one of the most rewarding and fun projects that I've ever done. I think the experience is 100% worth the price, and I can't wait to get back out there right now and go ride my board. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos and being super patient while I work on other projects, and I hope to see you guys in uh, less than four months.